Hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So it's official, we have Sunsoft Collection 2 coming to Evercade at the end of April 2024. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at the seven games and playing them as well and giving you my first impressions. Is this cartridge worth buying? Let's find out. Okay guys, so Sunsoft Collection 2 is now official, it is coming to Evercade at the end of April. Let's have a look at the 7 games that are on this collection. Now I wasn't a huge fan of the original collection from Sunsoft, I thought they were a little bit tricky, but I know there are a lot of fans out there for these games, certainly those that had a lot of um, nostalgia for these games back in the day. Personally I didn't have that, so probably uh, I didn't appreciate this cartridge as much as some people would, but I know there's a lot of fans out there. And it looks like pretty much more of the same stuff. We've got um, Blaster Master Enemy Below, um, this is, I think it's a Game Boy Color game, and it, it looks very similar to the NES version that we have already. Um, it is a little bit different though, they do use a lot of the sort of same graphics and even some of the background, so you will see some uh, similar similarities to the first game, but it, it's more of the same. If you like that, you'll like this game as well. And um, We also have Euphoria the Saga, um, and it looks a little bit like, I guess, like Mr. Gimmick. Um, but I think this game actually came before Mr. Gimmick and it's also a NES title. I think you can play between four different characters uh, and it's another platforming style game. Again, it's pretty tricky like Mr. Gimmick. We also have Days Before Christmas. Um, I think this is a NES, a SNES title, sorry, and it's a platforming it's an adventure style game uh, and you're trying to, I guess it's something to do with getting presents back. It seems quite basic but we'll have a look at that as well. We've got the sequel to Aerial, The Acrobat. Um, and it's pretty much more of the same. The level structure seems a little bit different though, um, rather than collecting or doing certain um, sort of tasks through the levels, um, it's more like a Sonic style structure where you're just really going through the levels and getting to the end type of thing. I'm not sure if it's any better or it's just as frustrating, I'm not sure, but we'll have a look at it anyway. So Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel is a SNES title and this is another platformer style game, it's a little bit like a cross between Zool, Sonic and Cool Spot, something like that. Uh, and as obviously that is Aero's greatest rival from the Aero the Acropat games. Um, this one's alright, I quite enjoyed this one, might even be my favourite game of the collection, um, perhaps, but we'll have a look at that anyway. We have a Game Boy game called Pre Pre Primitive Princess and it's a puzzle platformer style thing. Um, yeah, we'll have a look at that as well. And lastly, we've got Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors, which is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is the PlayStation version. I didn't realise there was a PlayStation version until looking at the details. There also was a Neo Geo, Geo version and a Saturn version, but most likely we're going to get the PlayStation version on Evercade. So that's the games. Let's get stuck in, let's play them, and I'll give you my thoughts as we go. Let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I have to stress that these games are not running on Evercade products. Um, so the final version that we get on Evercade might differ from what you see in this video, um, good or bad. But anyway, let's get started with the first game. This is Aero the Acrobat 2, and it's basically more of the same. However, the structures of the levels are a lot different. Um, in the first game, you obviously had to do certain tasks throughout the level to then complete them. But in this, it's really more or less trying to find the exit, running from one part to the other. It's a bit more like a Sonic style uh, structure to the levels. Um, but unfortunately, it's still just as frustrating as the original game for me. I feel as if the enemies just pop out of nowhere and take some life out of you. And obviously there are some hidden sections, just like Sonic the Hedgehog, um, as you can see here. But yeah, the enemies just pop out at you. They just take hits off you. Uh, and there's a lot of things in the, the sort of level structure that are just really frustrating and annoying. It's For me, this is just a very, very average platformer. It starts off quite good. It sort of grabbed me initially. But the further you go into it, I just felt it just got really frustrating and annoying and it's if you think of Tinhead on the Pico Collection 1 um, that level of frustration and it just starts to annoy as much as there's the design looks good the music's nice it does frustrate so obviously I reckon this one's definitely for the hardcore platformers only it's okay but probably very very average indeed Woo! <laughs> 
So on to Blaster Master Enemy Below, this is clearly a Game Boy Color game and you can tell looking at the graphics there's a lot of similarities to the NES game that we have on the first collection and I think they've actually stole some of the graphics um, from that version but it, the level structure does change a little bit but if you liked that first game you're definitely going to enjoy that, it is very similar, it has a similar feel, plays very similar as well. Personally I got a little bit frustrated with it, I thought it was okay but I know there's a lot of fans out there for this uh, game um, so if you loved the first game you will absolutely love this one as well, just not really for me, I got a little bit frustrated but I guess it will be a little bit easier um, using the save states on Evercade, it will certainly make um, the game a little bit less frustrating than probably playing on a Game Boy Color. Uh, for real. But anyway, it seems decent enough, very much more of the same, I would say.
Okay, so this is Days Before Christmas on the SNES, I believe. Um, and, you know, there's nothing really wrong with this game. It's a fun enough platformer where you're going about the levels, collecting things, parcels, rescuing some of your elves, I guess. But there's nothing really wrong with it. But at the same time, you could just ignore that and get to the end of the level and just go into the next stage um, and just keep going. It's very simple. It's very basic. It's a complete no-brainer. I didn't really find it that challenging, to be honest. Um, but there's nothing massively wrong with it. I just felt it, it's got that feel to the game that it was made in one weekend. Um, even though it looks really nice, sounds really nice, it's the sort of gameplay is very, very basic. It feels a little bit like it's been ripped off of Aladdin or something, I guess. That's how the gameplay feels to me. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a very average style game. I guess you'll have fun for maybe half an hour and you probably never go back to it. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just not amazing at all. Okay, so this is Galaxy Fight. I'm pretty sure that will be the PlayStation version that we get. And, and you can see the graphics are quite nice. There's a lot of kind of unusual flickering on the shadows. And I'm not entirely sure if that's an emulation issue or what, but it's kind of annoying when you're actually playing. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with it. The graphics are really nice. Um, gameplay is decent enough, but it's very tough. And it reminds me a lot of the one-on-one -on -one fighters we have on Team 17 and probably more specifically the one-on-one -on -one fighters we have on Pico Arcade. They're just unbelievably hard and difficult to make any progress. Um, 
hopefully maybe there's options that we can actually dumb down the difficulty a wee bit or maybe I just need a lot more practice there's no doubt looks nice but very very difficult to play I just wish we could get a one-on-one -on -one fighter it's a little bit easier for me personally I still think the best one-on-one -on -one fighter we have on Evercade is probably fighters history that we got way back in 2020 obviously that's arguably everyone will have a different opinion anyway this one's all right it's just tough as heck <laughs> Okay, this is pre-pre primitive princess. Say that fast ten times, you'll probably make a mistake. Anyway, this is clearly a Game Boy game. I'm pretty sure when we get the Evercade version, they'll probably change the graphic style and probably have a go with this uh, black and white uh, version. It's probably a little bit easier on the eyes. This is obviously the traditional style that we're looking at, and it's a puzzle platformer game. Um, and it certainly has a lot of flaws. As you can see here, there's some platforms here that are clearly not there and you'll just fall down but you only discover that once you sort of walk over and fall down so the idea is to collect the gem on each of these levels and um, you can also sort of destroy some of the blocks that obviously takes the enemies out that are below um, you can then repair them as well using the same hammer that you have this magical hammer whatever it is and um, but yeah that's basically it but it's got a lot of flaws for me um, I got a little bit frustrated with it um, I like the idea of it, obviously it's a puzzle platformer, but it's such a slow moving affair that you end up getting frustrated, there's so many flaws with it, I just get more frustrated than anything. It's got promise, but I don't know, I think a lot of people are going to hate this. And I do like my puzzlers, but I got a little bit frustrated with it as well. It's probably average at best.
Okay, so this is Euphoria, uh, and it's another Nest title, and this one's not bad, it's okay, it's not nowhere near as frustrating as their later title, Mr. Gimmick. Um, you actually get the choice of uh, going between, um, I think it's four different characters, obviously with Euphoria in the name, and you need to change between the characters depending on what situation you are in on the levels. Uh, obviously some of the characters may uh, be better for ice and snow, that type of thing. Um, so it's quite interesting, but it's quite frustrating at the same time. You have to remember to push down on the D-pad when you're jumping on the characters' heads to take them out. Um, sometimes you forget and you just jump on their heads, Mario style, and, and you obviously die instead. But it's, it's okay, it's frustrating, it's got a challenge to it. Um, there's a lot of graphical glitches here as well, I'm not sure if that's just the PAL version or what, but yeah, it's alright, it's just a little bit frustrating, it's not bad at all.
Okay, final game. This is Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel, and this is clearly one of the bad guys from the Aero the Acrobat series. It's quite clear that uh, this game is inspired from uh, lots of other platformers, uh, such as Sonic the Hedgehog 2, clearly from this opening part, um, Zool, Cool Spot, um, and probably even a little bit of Aladdin chucked in there as well. Does that make it a good game? I don't know. It's probably my favourite game on this uh, collection. I would say um, that's just really my first impressions um, I guess maybe after I've played the games a lot longer that might change but it's got a lot going for it uh, graphically very nice nice sound and um, the gameplay is all right but it does suffer a little bit from um, like Zool you want to obviously zoom through the levels but it's probably not the best way of playing it you really need to take your time um, and do it a little bit slower otherwise you're just going to lose lots of lives very quickly uh, I did enjoy it to a point um, but I still think a lot of these games on this collection are very average, but it's still pretty playable at least. It's, it's nice enough to have on the Evercade, I would say. Okay, my final thoughts on Sunsoft Collection 2. Um, honestly, I think if you liked the first collection, you're going to love this as well. It's pretty much more of the same, um, the same sort of challenge and, and frustrations that you find. Again, if you didn't like the first collection, it's the same. You will not like this. It is more or less the same kind of idea. Um, so obviously you need to take that into account um, before you actually purchase this. Personally, I'm probably somewhere on the fence. I like some of the games. I get frustrated with some of the games. Um, I think at times I feel the games are very average. I don't think there's anything truly outstanding on this collection, to be honest. I mean, pretty much Blaster Master Enemy Below is more or less the same style game as the first one. Euphoria the Saga is actually okay, but it's it's a little bit frustrating. Days Before Christmas is alright, but it'll probably be one of those games you'll finish pretty quickly. Aero the Acrobat 2 is all right but probably more frustrating than the first one which is almost hard to believe uh, zero the kamikaze squirrel actually enjoyed this one's pretty good but um it's still somewhere between average and, and okay i think or average to good somewhere like that pre pre primitive princess it has its flaws it's a puzzle platformer um, you certainly will need a lot of patience to play that one. Um, Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors, that might find its fans. It's a pretty decent enough um, game, but it's hard as nails. Uh, and I guess that might just sum up the video perfectly hard as nails. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.